Taking the trip from Calgary to Edmonton in 30 minutes. Toronto-based Transpod is exploring the development of a Hyperloop system between those two cities. Of course, right now we're sort of at the Memorandum of Understanding exploration stage, but it's pretty interesting stuff. Let's bring in Sebastian Genron. He's the co-founder and CEO of Transpod to, to discuss it. And uh, let's just start right now with the technology. Some people out there still, they may have heard the word Hyperloop, but they don't fully understand what it would look like to travel on one and how it works. How do they work? Uh, it's it's fairly uh, uh, simple actually. It's a concept which have been around for many years, and um, it consists of having vehicles the size of a train coach or a bus uh, traveling in a tube uh, where you've removed most of the air at the similar speed than an aircraft. Uh, so it's pretty much an aircraft without uh, wings. Uh, I mean, floating in those tubes using electromagnetic engines. And uh, yeah, to be able to achieve uh, uh, those uh, speeds too. Okay, so pretty fascinating stuff. I have to ask, why? And people are going to think this is a Toronto bias, but why Edmonton to Calgary? Uh, for I, for decades and decades, we've talked about trying to get some sort of high speed transportation through th southwestern Ontario, Toronto to Ottawa to Montreal. It never happens. Is, are there greener pastures out there for an idea like this? No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, we. I mean, as a company, we work with different governments and jurisdiction, not only in Canada but also uh, in Europe and so on. And uh, uh, it goes back to 2017, where uh, we had some initial discussion with uh, Transport Canada and talking about uh, okay, which corridor could be the best uh, to start uh, the development of that technology. And uh, back in the days. We had the recommendation to start with the uh, the, the corridor in um, in Alberta, mainly because it's you're dealing with only one province uh, compared to Toronto, Montreal, where you're dealing with uh, Quebec and Ontario. Uh, the corridor is also uh, fairly straight. Uh, it's a low density. Uh, the, it's flat too as well. So pretty much a, a quite an ideal candidate for our technology uh, in Canada and and the ridership. Uh, quite significant too as well so economically speaking it's interesting we keep hearing from governments that as they plan to have their sort of economic plan reboots to deal with coming out of the other side of the pandemic that they want a green focus is this the kind of project that would fall within the camp of green technology yeah definitely and you know what alberta is not only uh, is not the only one uh, the uh, european union uh, they're just about to pass a resolution where Hyperloop has been identified as a credible solution to replace uh, short-haul flight uh, to fight uh, climate change. So, uh, and there is definitely appetite too as well. I can see it from financial institutions uh, to, uh, yeah, to secure the financing and move forward with those projects. So all those goes into the right direction, definitely. All right, so covering that much distance in a tube, basically moving along at the speed of an airplane, this has to be a costly endeavor. I mean, even ballpark numbers, what would it cost to build a Hyperloop from Calgary to Edmonton? So the, the minimum, or this, the initial estimation we have is around $6 billion to, uh, to build the, um, the infrastructure. And um, the kind of, it will range between 6 to $10 billion to build that. Uh, more than the cost of infrastructure, what's really important is the business model behind it. And when we started that venture with uh, Ryan, uh, my other co-founder, we wanted to make sure that we have the business case uh, right and we don't end up like a conventional high-speed rail track, which is not profitable like 80% of those lines in Europe. And so in addition to the passenger revenue streams, we're adding three additional revenue um, uh, stream to, to, the, to the infrastructure. The second one is goods. We have to mix, uh, to mix I would say, the, the ridership with, uh, with goods and everything sensitive to time. We're not talking about natural resources. The, the third revenue stream is energy. Uh, you'll have tomorrow between Calgary and Edmonton potentially 300 kilometers of solar panels so you'll have an infrastructure generating energy. Initial numbers are showing that that might be actually, you might generate more energy than you need. And even if that's not the case, it's gonna be anyway much better than any highway. 
And the last one is related to, um, I would say, the, uh, the, the fiscal aspect uh, related to the real estate uh, uh, increase of value. Like when usually you have such infrastructure, uh, houses and apartments are increasing in values because you're adding additional services. And then you can negotiate a percentage back to that private uh, to those private consortium. So long story short, you have passengers, goods, energy, and and real estate kind of um, uh, cut on it, which makes those infrastructure projects much more attractive than conventional one. And this is what we need to uh, confirm in the next feasibility study we we actually started. Uh, we only have less than a minute left, but I want to ask you before you go, Sebastian, uh, obviously we're at the feasibility stage, the sort of like planning stage. Is there anywhere in the world we can point to right now and say, hey, look what they're doing. This, this, could, this could be a real thing. This is a reality. Oh, this is definitely reality. And uh, the, the support from the government is actually more important than any public funding people may think about. It's kind of showing to the uh, financial world uh, that there is a path for commercialization regarding the technology we're developing. And this is what those players have been looking for. Very interesting stuff. And, uh, you know, I hope uh, to travel on one one day. Thanks for joining us, Sebastian. Yeah, can count on us. We continue. Sebastian Gendron, co-founder and CEO of Transpa.